Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Right now, what I'm going to be doing is showing off a new-to-me game that just arrived from Renegade Games, who I do have to thank for sending me a review copy. This is the rather long title of My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria Deck Building Game. This is a cooperative deck builder set in the world of My Little Pony, where players will be competing, or sorry, co cooperating. Players will be cooperating, uh, moving around Equestria, trying to solve problems, working together, and improving their decks to do so. With resources like sugar cubes and bonus cards and things like that, where each character player will be playing a pony of their choice with their own unique abilities. I am really looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, my daughters are big My Little Pony fans, and I've got to say, of all the cartoons my kids watched growing up, this one wasn't bad at all. I actually quite enjoyed it myself. So I'm really looking forward to checking this one out with my kids, who I will note are not young kids. Now, this is the one caveat I have heard about this game, is this is not a game for little kids. This is a full functional deck builder with all the complex you'd expect in a modern deck building game. So don't be fooled by the My Little Pony title. You got a little bit of meat here. This is a solid game. So first step, though, is going to be cracking the shrink and opening this up. So here's my copy with the shrink on. Shrink off. All right, let's take a look. I got to say, big color box. It did the UV coating thing, which looks great. Not the best for the environment, but it looks great. Um, I dig this. I, I This is something small that companies have started doing. I greatly appreciate. Some people like to store their games on shelves like this. Some people like to store their games on shelves like this. Title face up both ways. That, uh, that is just something I appreciate as someone with a large board game collection. So let's crack this open for the first time. Take a look at what's inside. All right, we're going to start off with some advertising. From Renegade, uh, there are other licensed games, which makes sense. They now have the license to a lot of popular culture, pop culture um, things. So you have their Power Rangers games, their Transformers games, their G.I. Joe games. Not surprising. Then we have the rule book. Again, the colors really pop. They, there's something... I realize it's My Little Pony, it's a cartoon, it's supposed to look like this, but this, they did a good job. Uh, oh, I love the text size, nice big, this is a great component overview. Um, they even show the backs and fronts of cards, that's always a nice thing to see. Um, setting up the game, looks like lots of examples. There's some little um, gameplay tips from the ponies, that's a nice touch. We're not looking at a ton of rules, but again, this does not look light. There's a, there's a lot of text here, there's a lot going on. We are looking at 11 pages of rules, but that includes the solo rules. So 10 pages for the core game. Um, there is a turn sequence on the back and what shows off the icons, which is really nice. Then we get to some counters and uh, the standees, which just I, I'm shocked by how small they are. Not that they're too small. And when I'd seen pictures of this game, I was expecting larger standees. Personally, I recommend going out and trying to find some stand miniatures of these. You can get some pre-paints out there that look great. Uh, my kids have some already, so we'll probably be using, or the actual pony action figures when we play. Uh, so you have cloud tokens, you have various bonus tokens for different resources. So this is two of a resource, and so on. Um, and bonuses you, you get, that you're going to get extra tokens. So, oh, those punch easy. I, that, Applejack's already trying to jump out. Oh, and there goes a counter over here. So <laughs> counters are trying to jump out off of the, the punch board here. So very well cut. Awesome looking box insert. Um... Looks like potentially room for expansions. Baggies, always appreciated. We're going to look at these. Anything in here? No. We're going to look at these in a second. And then we have oversized cards. Yeah, oversized cards and normal size cards. I already see a place to put some of these. Looks good. For now, though, we're just going to take all of these things out and put the box insert to the side with these in it. Kind of up here out of the way. So we can look at each of these different things one at a time. So this is really simple. Plastic standees for the punch out. Since Applejack jumped out earlier, we'll toss her in a stand. Oh, it's a tight fit. So these seem like you want to get them in once and not remove them. Okay, that is a ridiculously tight fit. So there you go. Pony in a standy. Um, I might even stand them up higher so that you see more of the art. Tight fit, but that usually means they won't fall off. Toss that in the box. These are sugar cubes. You have sugar cubes in three different colors and two different sizes, and I gotta say it's cute because there's glitter in there, which really kind of gives that sugary, glittery look. These come in two sizes. Small cubes are ones, big cubes are fives. 
and we have three different colors, which I'll use the big cubes to show off because they'll show up best on camera. Nice solid plastic components here. Dig these. Nice resort cubes. Sugar cubes. Oh, and we're trying to lose one before I even play the game. Okay, card decks. Let's start with the oversized cards. Thankfully, in one of the resealable style, I can see it. <laughs> there we go. Resealable style of package. Which for now, I'm just going to toss in the lid because I don't want to reseal it. We're going to sort these by the backs. Oh, these are nice and slippery. They're the nice quality cards. Here's our character cards and some gray cards. So we'll move these other decks out of the way. So here are our character cards, which show the characters with their cutie marks. Uh, as I said, I did watch this with my daughters. So you have these six uh, main ponies, of course, of Applejack, Fluttershy, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Twilight Sparkle, and Rainbow Dash. Um, these are actually on their leveled up. There's the starting side to each one. They each have a unique ability. And then on the other side, they, they get better. They flip and they, they can do even more or something. I have not played this game, so I can't give you the full details. Over here, we have our challenges. These are the things that are going to be going wrong in Ponyville that the characters are going to have to deal with. Uh, these cards are extremely shiny. So if you have somewhere with overhead lighting, you may have a difficulty with glare. I'm having a hard time even here to not get glare on the cards. So these are broken up into levels. A basic game, you're going to play with one random level one, one random level two, and one random level three difficulty to deal with. So it's just like, I've got a much better idea. Um, you need help is another one here. Awesome, obviously pony art, and now they're these are are, are back, back black backed or back uh, to randomize them. Then you have your actual challenges. So these are the, the the main goal of the game. So dealing with Nightmare Moon, just who does she think she is? Best night ever, and the Diamond Dogs are the the plots that come in the base game. So we're gonna put these aside for now and move on to the other cards. Now I'm just gonna grab the box insert for a minute just to show you a nice spot, put those right here. And same thing, like I can put the cubes under here later, which I'm not gonna do at this point. Then we get back to cards. Now I know I'm gonna grab this deck first because I know this is a generic card. One of those cards you can always buy. Most deck builders have that. We're gonna cut the shrink on, oh, still a bit of shrink. So what you have here is, is your, your helpful town pony. And I gotta say, one complaint I have so far is the white text on the gray is a little bit much. Now, you know it's a helpful town pony and it provides one, um, one horseshoe, but that could be used to be darker. Same thing here, these are the starting cards. So of course, everyone's deck's gonna start the same. Um, I don't remember how many of each card you get, but you're gonna have so many a good clean race cards. You are going to have so many, what you need is organization cards. It looks like one of each of those, so I think it's two of each of those. And then working together cards. So one of each of those, I think, is your starter deck. And then you are going to take the card for your pony as well. So these are the six ponies. And this is your unique ability. So when this comes up in your deck, you get your, your something to make it asymmetric. So every player has a different starting deck. Then I think we just start getting into the deck cards, which um, your cost is in the top right, which is paid for by Howard Shoes. You're going to have a market up. It's a variable market. There are some cards there are duplicates of, so some are more rare than others. So here's your starting cards for making your starting hands and your ponies. Uh, town pony you can buy every round. Um, features, obviously, card art from the game. Oddly, they left lots of room for card text, even if there is no card text. Um, what I don't love, I don't hate it, is the symbols of what you actually get are fairly small. They really wanted to show off the artwork on the cards which makes sense for a licensed game, but I would have liked the icons to be a little bigger. So we're going to take all these and we're going to jump back over to the box insert for a minute because if you look, there are dividers here and it looks like I could divide up these cards. So I'm going to put these here. These are all the starter cards. So I'm going to put all the starter cards here. You're going to put this here. It feels like, yeah, I would say there's enough room here for sleeved cards. That's a bonus. I don't personally sleeve my cards. I prefer to play unprotected. Um, these are the other starter cards, which we're going to throw here. And then we're going to have the main deck, which I assume the rest of the cards are all main deck cards. So we'll get back to those. So here we have the main deck of cards. All right, here we go. So lots of cards. There's different card colors and types. I'm not going to get into the details here. This is not meant as a teach. 
Um, but I will note, these blue ones are bad things that happen. So this is actually a separate deck. And these are the locations of Ponyville. So this is a separate deck. So here's your main deck cards. You're going to shuffle these really good. You're going to put a market up. Each of these is going to do its own thing. It's got a cost and what it gives you on the side, as well as special abilities. Pretty standard deck building stuff. So there's a whole bunch of these. Some, of course, you can see there are multiple cards up. So I'm just going to take those right now and put them off to the side. These, though, are situations. So they're bad things that can happen while you're playing, like having a cloudy day. It recommends the game, if you're new to deck building, don't use these at all. If you played deck builders, throw in four of them. If you win a bunch of times with four in, you throw in four more. The thing is, don't shuffle these in your deck until after you've already dealt out the market. So you're going to shuffle the card, put out the market, then put these out so that they're not in play the first round of the game. So these, since they're a separate type of card, I'm going to put in their own spot. And I'm going to put all these together. Again, we're back to the box insert here, just to kind of see how everything plays out. There we go. Now these are locations. You are going to start with Ponyville in the middle, and you're going to put out some random locations at the start of the game, and then you're going to have a location deck, and your characters can move between these. Again, not a teach, just trying to show you the different cards. Lots of text on these cards. I do like the artwork on the back showing Ponyville. And that's it. That is the end. Sometime I'll figure out exactly how I want to sort these. So I'm going to kind of show what you have here. There are room for a bit of expansions here, I would say. Uh, you could probably fit in another whole deck here, especially if you take the locations and put them here. You could definitely fit in at least one or two expansions. I don't know if there are expansions out for this game. Uh, again, there are baggies to sort the pieces and all these counters once I punch them. But I'm not doing that here live during an unboxing. Well, except for the fact they're punching themselves. <laughs> there you have it. So that is everything you get in the My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria deck building game. A hot new deck building game cooperative from Renegade Games. Uh, one to four players. Game times 45 to 90 minutes. Cooperate as the ponies trying to solve problems in Ponyville and eventually deal with whatever the major story is, the major threat. Um, all artwork from the show, as far as I can tell, it might be new artwork. Looks like ponies. It looks like the show... Um, one thing I do love about this already is that everyone's starting deck has a unique card that makes it asymmetric. That is something I love in deck building games that not everyone starts with exactly the same thing. You might have 10 cards of the same, but that 11th is different. That is something I greatly appreciate. Looking forward to trying this one out with my girls as well as my regular gaming group. Cause again, this is not a game for kids. This is a full, fully featured, fully involved deck building game with the same complexity that you'd expect out of other hobby deck building games. Now, when I do start getting this played, I'll be sharing pictures and talking about it online on social media, or you can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Eventually, we'll review the game on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. Then I'll toss up a written review at tabletopbellhop.com, and then we'll have a video-on-demand version of the review up on YouTube. So whether you want to watch it, read it, or listen to it, you'll be able to hear my thoughts on My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. One last thing before I go, just a Patreon shout out. I'm sure you're used to hearing these. Ours happens to be tabletop bellhop or patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. And it'd be awesome if you tipped your bellhop. Good day and game on.